Hey everybody, I discovered a very simple way to triple my money on my rental houses. Last year, um, in October 2017, I was looking for a vacation home for spring break with me and two other families in Florida. And I wanted to be on the bay in Panama City Beach and I couldn't find anything to rent. And it was my first time using Airbnb. So what I decided to do was buy an Airbnb down there and market to people about why the bay was better and why they should rent my house. And um, so I bought that home and quickly realized, I was able to actually put it on Airbnb before I even got the construction complete because I renovated the house and before I even had it furnished. I just made a note that said, this home is gonna be furnished. And I very quickly realized a few things. One, I realized that people would go, we rented the entire summer before we even had the pictures with it furnished. So people were gonna rent it because they wanted the product. So that worked really well for me. But then I realized that there was an algorithm with Airbnb that I was not aware of that was um, preventing me from getting a bigger number of people booking my home. So I, so I did some research and I saw that I needed to be a super host. And in order to be a super host, you have to have a lot of reviews. And you also have to have some other things that we'll talk about later. So I decided to get a short-term rental, an Airbnb, in Atlanta where I live so that I could get reviews on that house and get them on my Florida home so that I could become a super host. And with that, I just decided to rent my garage apartment above my garage that's detached from my house. And it rented like crazy. I got 21 reviews in the first year and I was very quickly on my way to a super host. I was getting more bookings on my home in Florida and I realized that the income, the rent that I was making on this little 900 square foot apartment above my garage was bringing in more money than any of my other 15 rental houses in Metro Atlanta that were triple the size. So with that, I started converting all of my long-term rentals into short-term rentals, and that's what I'm working on now. I'm so excited about it. I am making so much more money. It is a lot more work, but I kind of feel like I've figured out some tips and tricks that I can tell you about today that will help you fast track your way to having a successful Airbnb. Step one, what you need to do is you need to find a home that is not in a neighborhood or in an HOA community. You also need to make sure that the municipalities around you are going to allow you to have that short-term rental. So I look for houses that are on main roads um, to buy for my short-term short rental venture. And um, also, if you have more space between you and the neighbor, that's a good thing. Remember, people that are going to stay at your house are a lot of times on vacation. They may be traveling for work, but if they're on vacation, they might be partying more than if they were just staying at their own home. So you wanna make sure that you buy something with um, not having neighbors that you're gonna get upset at you and then be getting calls from the local municipality. So that's step one. Um, step two is you need to run the numbers. You need to look and see what you could make on long-term rental for that house. And you also need to compare it to looking at other Airbnbs in the area and seeing what people are getting. I do my math based off of renting it 25 days a month because I know that once I build up my reviews on that home, which is going to take about six months to get a good number of reviews to really get the bookings back to back all the time, I'm going to keep it occupied 25 days out of the month. Step two, you have got to furnish that bad boy and that is a big task. That is a huge task and I have done that the wrong way on my beach house in Florida. Um, I spent a lot of money. I went to West Elm and got all this mid-century modern furniture because my house down there is a mid-century modern. I even bought antique clocks that are mid-century modern and put it down there. And what did I learn in the first year? Oh, and I also bought very expensive mattresses and very expensive sheets. Now, while that is really nice to have in your vacation home, just be aware that you can buy the middle of the road product that's decent enough that people, and people are fine with that. If you buy the uber expensive, it's gonna get destroyed. It's gonna get, you, you just have a lot of turnover when it comes to sheets and pillows and towels and that sort of thing. So you don't wanna go expensive. So after learning the hard way on that, I buy everything from Ikea. What we do, and Ikea is, as you know, very reasonable, is I actually order it online and then I go pick up in this, I have somebody go pick it up in the store. Um, that's a lot easier than going down to the store and looking through everything and um, it'll just save you a lot of time and headache. And uh, I've got a formula too with what I figured out for the bedrooms and the tables, but basically just buy the cheapest item that they have that looks decent. So you don't wanna buy a hot pink table, but buy the brown table that's the cheapest one they have. Nobody cares, they're just using your home to vacation. 
So um, second, I order all of my stuff for the kitchen on walmart.com. Um, I have priced that through Ikea, I have priced that through Walmart, everywhere else, and Amazon, and the cheapest way to get toasters and silverware and everything for your kitchen. Also, you need to get vacuum cleaners, and I'll provide a list to you um, if you are interested in contacting me where you, uh, everything that I use and I've changed that around and I've got that tweaked now at this point too but Walmart's the way to go for that so I hire somebody now to do my Walmart shopping and I hire somebody to do the Ikea shopping for me they go in I hire somebody else to put together all the Ikea furniture and then the home is set up step two is that you have to be very careful at who you select for the cleaning that is a huge that is going to be an ongoing maintenance thing that you have to maintain with the home. So you want to interview a few people, make sure they already do short term rentals and they get it, they understand that there's a turn, somebody leaves at 10 a.m., somebody comes in at 4 p.m., and they've gotta get in there and get that place cleaned, all the sheets changed, washed, and put back on the beds in the, during that time. You're going to need to buy two to three sets depending on the cleaning company that you use and how many people they have that come in and out with changing out the sheets and then coming back the next time to, to turn the unit. Um, I always offer my Airbnb, Airbnb so I get the most um, rentals. I will do as a minimum of one night. Many people don't wanna do that because it's more management, but I wanna keep mine rented all the time. And what I like about doing a minimum of one night is that I do get a lot of people in for the night using my space and then I get, an extra, I get a lot of reviews because I have people come for just a night. So you really need a good cleaning company for that to maintain that for you. Um, as far as setting up the home, you want to have big, nice flat screen TVs on the walls. Um, actually, you'll see I've got some in the background that I'm about to put at one of my Airbnbs. And nowadays you can get a 60 inch flat screen TV for a few hundred dollars. It is so cheap, but it makes such a big difference. People really like those and we highlight those in our listings on Airbnb. So, Buy the nice big TVs. I mean, don't buy the expensive ones, just buy the, the cheap 60 inch TVs. Put them throughout the house. You cannot go wrong on that. Definitely have them in every bedroom. Um, you maybe don't need the 60 inch TVs in the bedroom, but you definitely wanna get a good size for the wall. Don't go cheap on the TV. Um, you also need to get Kivo. Kivo or another online system that people download an app to access the home. That's the best. You don't want a hard copy, a hard key that somebody ha can go make a copy of and then keep after they leave the home. Also, they might lose the key. So Kivo access in and out of the house and then it switches and it's different and won't allow the last person in on the app once their day is up. It is the easiest app I have found to use for that and it is very reasonable. Um, I put security cameras up that are attached to my iPhone at all of my homes on the exterior so I can see what's going on at any time. If somebody's trying to make a delivery, I can check and make sure the cleaning company has come and gone, all of that. It's very helpful to have. I highly recommend that you take the time to do that as well. And um, you also need to set up the internet and um, you don't need to have a phone line at the home because that, as we all know, that's antiquated. But definitely need the internet and you're gonna need to have a guest access password for them and um, I put together a book in the home of local restaurants that they can go to and what local fun things to do. Everybody appreciates the book. Even though they can Google things online, to have a book there, to know that we've vetted out the restaurants and we know the area, it's very easy to put together and I highly recommend that you do that. If you're just starting out on your Airbnb, my advice is to market your home for about 50% of what everything else is going for in the area and only put the calendar for six months out instead of allowing it to be for 12 months out. You will get so many bookings in the beginning that you will be, it'll be very exciting every time your phone, the noise goes off on your phone and you know that you got another booking. Um, when you do that, people are going to come stay at your home and they're going to be like, wow, I cannot believe that I paid that little for that awesome place and you will get amazing reviews. So after you get those, I'd say about three to five reviews, you just start putting the price higher and higher and you can play around with it. Airbnb has a smart pricing feature on the phone, but, and I sometimes turn that on with some of my rentals and with some of them I don't. You really just need to look at what is available in the area, see what kind of bookings you're getting and play around with the numbers. But the smart pricing, what you do is it will tell you what to put as a minimum and what to put as a maximum and then it just picks the price for you depending on 
what is going on and how many bookings are going on in the area. Right now for the Super Bowl in Atlanta, I just tripled my price on everything and I put a new Airbnb out um, two weeks ago. The Super Bowl is coming up this weekend and I um, put the price about triple what it would be and four hours later we booked it for the Super Bowl. Last but not least, here are the numbers that I found so far. I was able to take a home that should rent up for about $1,600 a month and my income is $5,200 a month on it. Now that one is my best one but I'm I think it's a really good one I've got another one it was it's a tiny little apartment that might rent for about 750 a month I'm getting 2,000 a month on that one so just under three times the normal value and then I've got another home that I was renting previously to a long-term tenant for 1350 a month and I only made it an Airbnb about two and a half months ago and so far my income has been about um, on that one, it's been about 2,900 a month. So I'm more than doubling what I took in. So for me to have the extra work, organize the cleaners, have the app on my phone dinging all the time, answer people's questions, it's really a no brainer for me to turn everything that I possibly can into an Airbnb. And that's why I'm sharing this with you today because it's been so exciting for me and I feel like I've learned a lot and that I can share that with you and help you in your venture on your Airbnb.